Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, alrighty. So today, what I want to know, and I'm sure other people want to know, mm -hmm. is how you and Brian went from this Twitter friendship mm -hmm. to an actual romantic relationship that ended up turning into all of this. Okay. I think the height difference is hilarious. Hey, down there. <laughs> so, my first question okay. is, was it from the get-go more than just a friendship? Or from the beginning, did you know it was going to be something more? Actually, I... Sadly to say, I didn't take it very seriously because as soon as he's like, I live in Germany, I was like, okay, awesome. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, well, he seems really cool, but like Germany, do I really want to do a long distance relationship, like super long distance? So no, I didn't take it very seriously at the beginning. I just thought he was a nice person and I liked to like talk to him. Um, so no, it kind of snuck up on me. So good. My next question was, what was the first thing that he said to you or that happened that made you think it was something more than just a friendship? I mean, his like initial pickup line, it was so cute. Um, so obviously I knew he was hitting on me. Um, but I think it was more just like getting to know him and realizing like, wow, this person is exactly who I've been looking for. And he checks most of my boxes. So, <laughs> so when did you start taking him seriously? Was there a moment or was it if it's just slowly? Um, I think it was just slowly. I just think the more I got to know him, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm starting to fall for this person. But I don't think there was like one thing that was like, bam, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date him, you know? So as things started to change, and things became a little bit more serious, what kind of changed in your day-to-day -day interactions with him? Like, how did it slowly grow? Was there anything that you were doing that was different, or? Um, I think we just, once I think we figured out we really liked each other, it went from just like casually texting whenever and then I realized oh my god I was excited to get a text from him which made me think oh my gosh I'm falling for this person oh my gosh I don't know this person at all oh my gosh I need to know more about him so it turned into like you know phone calls and then FaceTimes um, so I think it's really important once you do decide okay I'm gonna I'm gonna put in some effort that you really do put in the effort but like really get to know that person because when you're meeting over the internet I think it's so hard how are you gonna know they could be saying anything so like one thing I was doing is like I would and I know he was doing this, this we're very similar in the way we think um, he was posing different questions the same question posed in different ways in different scenarios to make sure my answers were always pretty like the same um, because you know, what if somebody's just lying? Like that's, a, I think that's a huge fear for people that are meeting online is that what if this person's putting on a show or you're being catfished or whatever. So I think definitely FaceTime um, to make sure that's the person and also talk a lot before because people can maybe, you know, pretend for a little while, but unless you are a master liar, you're gonna forget what you lied about. So I think you can catch them in a lie and really know if this person's like being true or whatnot. So speaking of like FaceTiming to make sure, mm -hmm. do you remember the first time you FaceTimed him? Were you nervous? What were you doing? I'm pretty sure I remember. And I don't know, like I might have him see if he can figure it out, but I'm pretty sure it was when I was living in Venice and I had this like really shitty kitchen, but I was like running around like a maniac trying to find like the best lighting. <laughs> it might be the, the blogger in me, but yeah, I, I was running around like my apartment. I'm like, okay, where am I going to have my 
impromptu, like, I wasn't even trying FaceTime, but really, like, I was like, is it in front of a window? But then, like, the background looked shitty, like, so I was really, I think it was then, I, I remember I actually ended up, I was making food, so he was, like, propped down, like, on my kitchen counter, like, propped, the phone was propped on something, so it was, like, not even a flattering angle, you know, like, high is always flattering, low is, like, not so much, but, yeah, I don't know what happened from me trying to find the perfect light to, like, you know what, whatever, I'm gonna do it here while I'm cooking, and I think that was the first time, and I think we were both really nervous, but, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the first time. So, as you guys kept continuing to talk and FaceTime, especially, I think, for other people who are in the situation, do you have any, like, things that you remember that were, like, the best questions that he asked you or that you asked him where you felt like, well, I'm really glad I asked that because it's important to me. Yeah, I think um, a big thing that's really important to me is their relationship with their family. Um, So that was one of the questions that I really wanted to dive deep and and see. I have a really good relationship with my family, um, and I wanted to make sure – you know, everybody's family's different and, you know, divor- divorce is so common and stuff. But, like, what are your ideals about having a family? Because I knew I didn't want to date anybody else unless it was somebody that I could potentially marry. And I think that's obviously a very important subject that you should know about. Also, um, what he thought about kids. That was, like, huge. And uh, did he want them? Did he not want them? Um, and then the third thing was past relationships, how they ended, um, that was a big one because I've always obviously had, you know, um, a pretty funky, (laughs) um, relationship that didn't leave like a very good taste in my mouth. So I wanted to make sure he almost had gone through something similar so he can understand how painful, you know, mistrust and, and all that stuff is and not feeling like you're secure in a relationship and all that. So those three were like huge. So family, children, past relationships, what happened? Were there any bumps in the road? Like as you guys had to communicate and build this entire relationship via text, phone calls and FaceTimes, were there any kind of missteps or issues especially being in two different time zones, you know, any advice that you could give somebody or struggles that you may have had um, with communicating clearly? Yeah, I mean, there's still bumps in the road. We're like in the on the bumpiest road. <laughs> um, just being cross-continental is like the worst thing in the world when you're trying to have a long distance relationship because you're you're not only like five six hours or three hours away like if it was like LA New York or somewhere in Europe to another place in Europe or whatever it's literally like we had a nine hour difference so he's about he's you know having dinner and going to bed soon as I'm waking up and starting my day and my mornings are always so busy with work and emails and meetings you know, by the time I slow down at four o'clock, like he's already asleep. And at the beginning of our relationship, I know he was like staying up till like two, three in the morning to talk to me, even though he was like training so hard. And he has like, like his training schedule, you know, is bananas. Like they train multiple times a day and it is, you come home and I can't imagine because I go to the gym and I train for an hour, not even an hour, let's be real. (laughs) But I train and I'm like exhausted and all I want to do is sit on the couch and watch TV. And like I, he was staying up till two, three and we were like watching TV together, like Netflix shows. And um, yeah, so it's definitely really hard. I think really making the time, but I think when you have somebody that's committed to getting to know you and committed to having a long distance relationship, they will make the time. So if I think this is the biggest tell, honestly, if somebody doesn't have the time, they're not making time. And that's what was the hardest thing for me to learn. I think as a young girl growing up into like a more mature woman (laughs) is men will make time and women will make time for what they want to make time for. They will find a way. So 
he obviously made time, I obviously made time, uh, but it was definitely very difficult. The hours was, is still grueling, so we try our best, but we talk every morning. Regardless, we text all throughout the day till he literally passes out, and what's really cute is he always, always, like when I wake up in the morning, there's always a good morning text from him, which usually is like 3, 4 in the morning my time, but always and if I don't get a morning test like there's been a few times where he's forgotten or he just got super busy I like I'm like where's my text and then he'll always like do it you know so I think having like little things like that is huge cool and I heard you mentioned that you guys were watching like series together on Netflix so was that something that like helped you guys get closer and is there anything else like that that besides just texting and talking like anything thing else that you all did to make sure that you felt like you were a part of each other's lives mm -hmm. yeah so again it's so hard with the time difference so the one thing we were doing is he was you know I was trying around like three o'clock to always be home and he would stay up really late and we were actually watching the first season of Stranger Things on Netflix together and so we'd literally be on the phone and and like have Netflix ready and then we would count and be like three two one and then on one you click play so that we're almost identically watching and I'm sure there's like a few difference in seconds but yeah so it was it was fun because then we would like talk about it like oh my god what just happened like through text as we're watching the show so I felt like we were watching it together but obviously it's better when you can cut off but it is what it is um and then what else did we do we just would like insignificant little things that you would never text like your husband or your boyfriend about like throughout the day we tried to text each other that because then we felt like we were part of the day-to-day -day life, which is where I think you really miss somebody. Um, so like, I don't know if I was going to my meeting and whether he was awake or not, I would just text him these little things, you know, almost like status updates, you know, like, oh my God, I've been circling for 10 minutes and I can't find a parking spot super late for my thing or whatever, it's little things like that. So he felt like he was, you know, then I would like talk about like random stuff about my friends that he's literally had never met and he had no idea who like Brenda or Ashley are or anybody really. And but he was like, oh, yeah. So then what did Brenda say? You know, so it's just like taking the time and making the effort. We did this thing when we were getting to know each other better where like I think we did it a few times, a couple times, a few times. Um where we literally went online and found like 20 questions to ask your partner. And so we kept doing that. We found 20 different questions each time and he would ask 20, I would ask 20 and you have to be completely honest. I think that's another really good way to get to know each other. So, and it's actually kind of fun because sometimes questions are weird, you know? So I thought that was cool. And I feel like everybody should do that whether you're in a long distance relationship or not. So when you're getting to know someone long distance, do you have any like do nots, like don't ever do this or try not to do this, you know, when you're having to communicate long distance? Yeah, definitely. I think the hardest thing that most people wonder about is trust, obviously. Um, so, you know, I would never, like the biggest thing, do not play games. Uh, be really honest say what you really think I mean they're not even there so if you say something <laughs> offensive that they don't like or they don't want to hear like they're not there but it's better to just be open um, so never play games like especially with a super long distance relationship like us like if I was gonna do that thing where like most guys and girls would like oh she texts me or he texts me I'm gonna wait two hours so I don't look desperate and text him back no he would always text me back immediately if he saw my text as so the suit bleh. if he saw my if he saw my text then he would just text me immediately same thing with me um, so definitely don't do that stuff because you're just missing out on time so if it takes you two hours to text back you're only going to talk like three four exchanges of texts and then somebody's going to sleep or you're getting busy or something so none of that um, with trust I definitely think you have to give people the benefit of the doubt, right? Like, they don't owe you anything, especially if you haven't even met yet. Like, I, if he's, you know, if it's a guy and he just went to meet up with Linda, 
you you know, I'm sure you could be like, oh, who's Linda? I don't think I've heard about her yet. Is that one of your friends or whatever? But like, I wouldn't be like, who the F is Linda? <laughs> and why were you with her or whatever, you know? So none of that, like, just kind of let things fall where they may. Um, also, let me think, what else? Days and no, no. I really think it's just like those two things. Just don't play games and just be really open and honest. Because we were literally, I told him, like, I think the third time we talked, I was like, so I'm not really looking to date anybody unless they could be a potential husband. I'm sorry, but any other woman will tell you saying that to somebody, like, on your third date or whatever, third text anything like that guys would the women think guys would run for the hills and most guys would but you know what he was like no I feel the same and I appreciate you telling me that <laughs> so it's like you got to find that person that that's in the same life phase as you and they are ready for the same thing you are don't try to change somebody it never works <laughs> all right so I only have a couple more questions um one of them being how did you know that you were ready to meet or that you wanted to meet how what was it that gave you you know the sign that this was a guy that you wanted to actually meet in person after talking for so long over text um I think that I knew I wanted to meet him the moment I started to like him um I think think that the way we met was a little bit by chance just because I had to go to Europe to meet my friend Sarah and then also Sam and it just kind of happened sooner but if it wouldn't have happened in late September October we would have he was the plan was he was gonna when he had break come to Los Angeles and we were gonna meet in person so um, luckily that ended up being our second meeting and we were already in a relationship by then. But um, what was the question? How did you know like you wanted to meet him? Like how did you know oh. that like it was like the real deal that you should meet yeah. instead of just being like so nervous and like I don't know if it's real. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I just think I knew that I wanted to meet him when I realized that a lot of our wants and morals were kind of lining up. I think that's how you know you want to be in a relationship with somebody, whether it's long distance or not. You know, you really got to, like, I don't try to change somebody. If they don't want kids, most likely they're not going to want kids for a really long time or ever, or somebody's going to, you know, get pregnant by accident or something. You know what I mean? I don't know, like, yeah, just line up your wants, what you want out of life. If they want similar stuff, meet them. All right, and then when you finally met, because after your first meeting, you guys made it official, yeah. how, so well, how did you, like, did you just know immediately as soon as you saw him, like, that all of your, like, everything you suspected was confirmed or was it like a gradual thing over the few days you guys were together like that's a big step to commit yourself to someone who's you know miles and countries and seas away yeah so what was it once you met him that really sealed the deal for you I think I kind of knew towards the end like right before I was even out there um I kind of knew he was somebody special um, but I wanted to confirm it in person and then we met in person and our first meeting when we were in the airport was just like Super awkward and like more nerve-wracking. It was weird because we had FaceTime so you know a lot But then like meeting in person is a whole different ball game So that was just awkward and weird and we couldn't even find each other in the airport and so it was a mess but and I had come off of a 12-hour flight so you can't imagine I didn't look my best <laughs> Um, and he was coming from practice. I just, I think it was a gradual, like, we both, I think, were really attracted. Well, on my end, I don't know. <laughs> I was really attracted to him. But, like, over the coming days, I I knew, especially after the week in Frankfurt, that he was somebody that all of my 
thoughts of who he was, they were real and they were accurate and I knew he was somebody special and I was okay with committing. I took the leap of faith. I was like, okay, let's just try it. You know, why not? So the last thing um, is basically how did you decide like where to meet him? Because obviously, you know, you felt like you knew him pretty well, but at the same time you had never met. So that's a big decision. You know, how did you make it? Um, yeah, I think with us, like our very first first meeting was at the airport. So it was a very, very public place. I think you should always meet if you've never met somebody I would say meet in a public place, meet during the day, um, have a friend close by, like, you know, the whole week that I was in Frankfurt with him and in Paris, I had Sam with me, so I was never going to meet him alone, you know, granted I was pretty sure he wasn't going to kill me, um, but you know, you know, like, just safety, safety first, especially, you know, girls are always more susceptible to, like, dating violence and you know all that so just be be careful meet in public meet during the day have your phone on you make sure it's fully charged maybe even I mean this is a little creepy but like record like you know just put your phone on record just in case like you know I don't know I don't know or share your location with one of your friends or your family member or let People know, hey, I'm going to meet this person. We're going to be here. If you don't hear from me in two hours, but then also be diligent and text that person in two hours so they don't call the police. But definitely think about safety and then, you know, but also don't go there guarded, you know, but just be aware. Be aware. I think not enough women are aware and then sometimes stuff happens when they meet strangers. So <laughs> I think that's it. I think, I think we should wrap this up because it's a long video and there's so much more to come but thanks for watching again and i'll see you next week so make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications and all that jazz